Hi everyone, I'm Sloane from SloaneBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This is my second video in a series of videos on the life and the mysterious death and the energy of Marilyn Monroe, one of the all-time favorites, Hollywood classics, piece of Americana, worldwide famous movie star. I doubt that there's anybody alive once they get to the age of like 12 that doesn't know who she is. They may not be familiar with her work, but she crossed all generations. So as I said in my first video, I was asked about 20 years ago to channel Marilyn Monroe. Everybody is, probably every psychic on the planet, if they're doing something publicly, has been asked to get Elvis, Marilyn, and just about everybody, Liberace, and he does come through quite a bit actually, but they've been asked to channel the great icons in film history. I could not pick up on Marilyn's energy. I could not grasp it. I could not feel it. I could not telepathically hear it. And I just didn't feel it mesh into my own body energy. However, I did connect with a woman who said she was the daughter of Marilyn Monroe. She said she'd been in utero with Marilyn and been ready to be pregnant, continuing a pregnancy, which was stopped abruptly, and she crossed back over to the other side. But she told me that she was Marilyn's daughter, and the interaction had been agreed upon between both of them. So she was the one that gave me the initial information where I found out that Marilyn had been reincarnated back. She had basically jumped right back into another life in order to get back to her old life, which is a little bit of a theme I've been picking up lately. One of my next videos was going to be on Dorothy Dandridge, and it was very interesting. I'm starting to see a theme with certain celebrities and their exiting off of the planet and their entrance back onto the planet. Anyway, getting back to Marilyn, how could we forget? I picked up on the energy of Marilyn. This time I went running, I went out, and I was trying to figure out how to pull her energy in again or pull the energy in of her daughter. I couldn't get it. So I thought for sure I could get husband number one or I could get husband number three because I'm a huge fan of Arthur Miller, the playwright. Nope. Guess who I got? I got husband number two. Husband number two, otherwise known as Joe DiMaggio, was a double Sagittarius with a Pisces moon. Now that cracked me up because Sagittarius energy in and of itself is pretty much like a bomb went off in your living room. Double Sag is like, hi, here I am, very friendly. So I wanted to see how his energy came into me. The first thing I noticed is he's a very quiet and polite man, okay? So he's very humble as he approached me. He didn't just bounce in like the Sag energy that I would have assumed would have followed him from the other side to this side, but he was actually very... Um, resident and respectful of my energy and how much he was going to put on to me. So it was a very even given exchange from somebody on the other side. There's a lot of times when energy comes to me and they basically knock you over and you're like, holy crap, not this time. And I was very sure when I felt his energy come in that he was going to tell me that he wasn't jealous and he was going to defend his position within the marriage. Or he was going to talk about his baseball career, which probably all the men on the channel want to hear about. Um, but that's not what happened. What I got was this very contemplative, poetic, sensitive man who could have a little bit of a temper when provoked, but the temper would go as easily as it came. And he wanted to let me know what it was really like to be Marilyn's husband. He was very interested in talking about her. What I could understand from the energy is once somebody reincarnates back over here, this people on the other side that actually love this person, if they are over there, tend to want to help the energy move forward because usually when they come back as quickly as she did, there's a purpose behind it. There's a reason. There's a focus. There's something that they're wanting to accomplish. And he was very... Um, direct in telling me about the interaction between the two of them. And he basically started it like a little bit of a story. So he was introduced to Marilyn via a third party, via a fourth party, okay? So there was a combination of a male and female who were dating that introduced Joe to Marilyn. Now, I know all the reports. He's saying all the reports about you know, Marilyn not wanting to meet him because he was an arrogant, you know, athlete and she wouldn't have been wrong necessarily, but he wasn't that. 
He was equally as frightened to meet her as she was of him. And the reason that she didn't want to meet him had nothing to do with him being an athlete. It had to do with the karma between the two of them. He was going to be the lifeline for her in this life once it was set into motion prior to them meeting. This is how he explained it to me, which he didn't know when he was on this side because so much is hidden and blocked from us. We don't know a lot. But he was basically telling me that prior to their meeting, she was going to need somebody that she could count on, whether she was married to them or not. And she had to meet this person, fall in love with this person to be able to know that this was the person she was going to connect with and that she could count on throughout her life. And that was their karmic connection. He said when he met her, he instantly liked her. She was like totally fun and a little bit wild. She didn't follow like etiquette protocol at all. She just kind of did what she wanted from her heart. She had like a real genuine expressive nature. She could be like a spoiled brat, he tells me, but he could be like a spoiled brat, he also told me. The reason that he felt so connected to her and it triggered him immediately, and this is what he said, he, okay, telepathically said, I picked up on the energy of it. It's like a conversation in my head. I know when I say said, they're like, well, what did he say in words? It's more like they put the thoughts into my head and I feel, I feel a conversation in my head. Like I'm talking outside of myself to myself, but I know it's him because I don't have these thoughts. Anyway, how he explained it to me is in his own childhood, this is how he started it. He had needed a certain kind of father figure. And he had wanted to be raised in a certain way, and he wasn't. He had watched the relationship between his parents, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. And his mother wasn't given enough, enough latitude to express herself. He really wanted to be the type of paternal, as in fatherly figure, to Marilyn without it being sick. I don't mean it. And there, there were, what, um, I think maybe 12 years difference. I'm not quite sure. Somebody can look that up for me. <laughs> I, I know it was more than 10 years, but it wasn't like 20 years or 30 years or anything like that. But he wanted to be paternal towards her. He wanted to guide her. He wanted to protect her. She opened up all of those feelings, those, those feelings that he didn't have in childhood and she certainly didn't have in childhood. And he wanted to kind of guide her. He wanted to love her in a way that was both fatherly sexual and kind and he tried really hard to do that this was a little bit foreign to him though because he had never run into a temperament like her and boy did she have a temperament he's telling me about this temperament she would throw things at him <laughs> ah, been there done that right she would throw things at him when he tried to control her she had this thing where she was just like a wild horse you couldn't control her she wasn't going to allow you to control her so if she asked you for advice this is how he described it to me if she asked you for advice say career advice relationship advice with one of her friends um he would give the advice but he would give the advice from the perspective of really trying to put himself in her shoes and also gauge what was best for her on a soul level. Like he really tried to do this. I'm not saying he couldn't be a pain in the ass because he's kind of showing me that he could. Um, it's funny, as I'm talking, he's sitting at the end of my table and he's got his hand back on the chair like this. He's got a cigarette in his mouth. He's got his legs crossed and he's like watching me do, <laughs> he's watching me do my thing. Um, and it's interesting. He's describing it like before he would get up to play ball, he would kind of just sit back there really calm, have a smoke. Sounds funny for an athlete now. Have a smoke and then go out and do his thing. So he's letting me do my thing. But he is basically, so now I feel like I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the stage <laughs> being eyed from over there. Um, it's really funny, but he goes into, now it's time to be serious, said the Sag to the Leo. I have to be serious. I don't want to be serious. Anyway, he was saying to me and is saying to me now that a lot of the misconception about their marriage, because it was very short lived, I think it was around nine months, but he basically made me feel that there were people that he hated, he might be a strong word, that he did not like, were disingenuous, did not have Marilyn's best interest. This would not be unusual in the entertainment industry, but he's showing me that these people, once Marilyn signed up for 
Some Like It Hot, and she signed up for that movie, which they blamed him for being jealous for her skirt going up for that movie, okay? Oh, not Some Like It Hot, what am I saying? The Seven Year Itch, <laughs> I just went to Some Like It Hot. Oh my God, okay, The Seven Year Itch. The one where she's over the New York subway station. I should know this, I'm a huge Marilyn fan. Anyway, when she signed up to do The Seven Year Itch, she was basically single. And as a single actress, he describes to me as a single actress, she was available to the male population. It's not like she was gonna have sex with them all, but she could make you think she was gonna have sex with you. She could look at you and she could pull you in that way. And that's how her popularity grew because she was so down to earth and so communicative from a genuine place that she made people feel like they actually knew her. Now, the people around her, and he's specifying her agent and the director of The Seven Year Itch, both of those people, maybe manager, agent, I'm getting the word agent though, he's saying that both of these people, okay, both of these people were plotting to break up the relationship between them. Marilyn wanted to marry Joe. Marilyn wanted to have kids with Joe. And I feel like that's where her daughter came from. There was a pregnancy somewhere within that connection and one that she didn't go forward with. I kind of feel like, um, well, I'm not being told what it is. There's, I'm not even getting a look over this way, but I kind of feel like the pregnancy was terminated. I can't really specify because I don't get a feeling either way, but the, the, the way that I'm going is like the pregnancy ended abruptly and I don't think she was that far along. So for it to end that abruptly, I'm going with some kind of a instant ending to the pregnancy, call it what you will. Anyway, I'm feeling like Marilyn wanted to go forward with this, but what I'm hearing Joe say is that as the movie got going and as the PR got going and as she got into a relationship with him and as the men, the male audience knew that she got married, this became a liability for the studios, for the movie theaters, for the money, for the money, for the money. Keep in mind, back in the day, the agents were like slick Okay, we call the agents the pimps. The agents pimp out their celebrities. There's always a pimp to an entertainer, to a creator. There should not be, but there's pimps all the way back through history. I know agent, not a nice word, but they just collect money off the profits of other people because they lack in their own creativity. Unless, of course, they are writing and directing a piece for their client, which happens rarely and can happen but not usually. Usually the agent just comes in and does the negotiating of the deals and the talent is already there. Now, maybe the talent isn't business-minded and then there's a good collaboration. In this case, Marilyn with Joe was causing everybody to get their, their whatever in an uproar because she was taken. Now, their main celebrity, the biggest sex symbol in the world, who wanted to change her career, she wanted to be more serious, was now married. So she was married and she didn't want to play the sex symbols anymore. She wanted to be intelligent. Now here's the thing, she was intelligent. He's telling me she was intelligent, I'm laughing. I just get glimpses of him over here and it kind of cracks me up, it like zooms my energy in. She was very intelligent. When they were married, he had a hard time communicating with her because she was freaking miserable. He doesn't like swearing either. He's another one on the other side from his age group who really doesn't like swearing. He's talking about not being the best partner, not being the best father, trying to learn how to be a good person. And he said, finally, when it was too late, he got it. Okay. It's like he got it later in life is what he's saying. Um, there were so many things about their relationship that he was just pissed at people trying to interject their own emotions into the middle of their relationship. He was like, who has this crap happen, okay? So there were so many people that were invested in pulling them apart that the reason they divorced, and this is what he's saying, even though of course it's irreconcilable differences or you just incompatibility or you just don't get along or you hate the other person in different states it's different like some states you still have to ask like i don't know which states i have heard you actually have to get permission okay permission from your husband to get a divorce like excuse me i really want to cuss now um as if that matters what is that about okay like Slave owner, slavery, slave what, all right? But anyway, he's saying, I'm like, that's not how it was in California. 
But what he's saying is the two of them actually decided for her career to step away from each other. Now, he was hot-headed. He had tempers. She, I'm feeling all across here, she had terrible panic attacks. This is what she's showing me. These are these horrible panic attacks, okay? All through here. It feels like chest pains to me. He's talking about the panic attack and the anxiety and being out in public. He's also letting me know how psychic Marilyn was. She did hear voices and not in the mentally ill way. She heard the voices. She told him about her psychic self. Her mother had premonitions. And here's the kicker. Before the two of them met, it was decided in the spirit realm on the astral level that Marilyn was going to be removed from the planet. So her guides put her husband, in this case, Joe DiMaggio, in her path so that when she was alive, she had a conduit to at least help her here because human beings, I mean, it's such a difficult planet and there's so much shit that happens and I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> ah, I get in trouble for swearing. Anyway, there's so much crap that happens on this planet that can actually destroy a human being and it makes us think in a certain way and she needed a confidant. She had many, but none that really had her best interest at heart, not entirely. He's also interjecting right now, talking about... Um, the uh, housekeeper lady, I think her name is Eunice. I hope so. Anyway, that's what I remember. He's talking about the housekeeper lady and he's saying that she wasn't mad at her for not stopping what went on, which means it was a complete ambush. And that's what I'm hearing. It was murder. It was an ambush. She was ambushed. Okay. She was literally ambushed. And here's the kicker. She told him who she thought was going to do it. She told Joe DiMaggio, I think this is going to happen to me. And that is part of the reason they divorced was to separate her and him and his power and her power from making that outcome happen sooner. I'm not saying they didn't have irreconcilable differences. He definitely says that the two of them fought and she did drink and she did take pills. And then she got wild, okay? You remember those days of being wild? She got totally wild and she was difficult. He drank. He went out with the guys. He did stuff. So they were at a little bit of an impasse like that, but it wouldn't be that way on the other side. Um, it just definitely wouldn't be that way. She was a kind-hearted person and he was there with her till the end. So I'm being shown actually that she had some psychic awareness of the fact that she was going to die young and not because she thought, oh, I'm going to get ugly. Actually, he's saying she was looking forward to a time when she didn't have to be a sex symbol anymore, where she could use her brain. She had a really eloquent brain and she had a smart brain and she wanted to start creating differently. Her agent, which he does not like, like just doesn't like, <laughs> does not like, did not like the, the director of the seven year itch either, said they concocted a bunch of bullshit to cause chaos, to make the public think one way so that the fan base would come back because the marriage would be dissolving, okay? But they decided to do it. That's the kicker. These two decided with all the chaos around them. Okay, I'm going to end this video right now because I just heard my phone ring. So I'm going to come back with another video. But once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.